It's Daybreak on Arise News. Time for the press preview. Your first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. Let's begin with our sister publication, Viste. It's leading with that Nairo crisis. And Fashola disagrees with Keamo, says President's action not contempt of the Supreme Court. Oh, there's been a video of vote buying with 1,000 Nara notes in Ogun State. Uh, our lives been making its rounds ahead of the elections on Saturday. Uh, President Buhari's vowed to end hardship faced by Nigerians over Naira scarcity. Uh, he was speaking from Addis Ababa. He's attending the AU meeting. Uh, the top stories in this day, ABC governors, uh, NWC insist Naira redesign policy hurting the people and the economy. Catholic bishops urge Nigerians to reject evil and vote God-fearing leaders. OB, we are re-energized. Uh, okay, let's, let me put, pull that, that one down. We are re-energized by things we saw across Nigeria. Uh, Atiku, uh, Atiku voting to new after Buhari's transition from frying pan into fire. And of course, in the part, over the weekend, we've seen uh, uh, two uh, uh, polls, one from Polaf and an endorsement from the economist uh, uh, Emmanuel Bella will be going into it. Uh, let's go, move on now to the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper uh, is saying uh, six days to elections. Well, it's, 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 APC governors, bank CEOs in last minute rush to clear Naira mess. Uh, Buhari Jonathan others become president unprepared. Uh, well, moving on to other stories, INEC to, to get poll uh, allocation from CBN on Tuesday. Uh, let's move on to other papers now. This is The Guardian. Tinubu APC governors beg Buhari Malami to respect Supreme Court. Uh, still in The Guardian. NNPC, NIPC rather, moves to improve national branding. Nigeria lost $825 billion to graft in 23 years. Shoyinka distances itself from fake quotes on social media. Again, Kaduna asks agencies to accept old notes as lawmakers seeks Elrufai's arrest. The Daily Sun. Paul's tension grips INEC over insecurity. Spate of violence protests raises fear among officials. The PDP knocks Tinubu claims... It doesn't represent hope. Atiku will wipe out tears of the Southeast. That's according to the uh, PDP campaign office. Now a swap, APC governors tackle Buhari. They're asking the president and the attorney general of the Federation to, Federation to obey Supreme Court orders. And uh, uh, presidency, Anyam Chimamanda, the economists endorse OB. Uh, there's some international papers before uh, we bring in Emmanuel. Uh, this is the Financial Times, and it's leading with this. Poland calls for NATO to guarantee Ukraine security uh, after the end of the war. The I paper, please find Buddy in River near where Nickel Bully went missing. Over now to the Daily Telegraph. Sunak pauses protocol deal over backlash from Tories and DUP. And finally from The Guardian, top scientist issues stark warning on shattered health care workers. And Prime Minister warned 100 Tories could rebel over EU deal. Uh, for the press preview, let's bring in Emmanuel Bellu. Uh, good to have you on the show, Emmanuel. Good morning. Welcome. Um, this day has a... A, a, a mind-blowing headline. Uh, two ministers in the APC, uh, Fashola, disagreeing with Kiamo. He says the president's action, uh, that's on the narrow redesign policy, is not contempt of the Supreme Court, Emmanuel. <laughs> well, I, um, can I, it's, uh, the, the drama is getting heated, and it's, it's funny that you have two ministers in the same government. And that's what people, uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout this whole crisis, a lot of people have been talking about the implosion 
of the of the APC. Remember that it's, it's their policy. It's the policy of the APC, the ruling party. Um, was it not discussed well among them? Is this a case of you know the party not agreeing with each other, or there is a disconnect somewhere, or they didn't understand what the president is saying? So these are the sort of things that a lot of people are talking about around the issue, especially even the meeting yesterday. Again, we are seeing a disconnect between the governors on one side and then the president around this policy, with opposition actually just mocking, practically now openly mocking, you know. Uh, Kwon Gozo, for instance, coming out so strongly yesterday to say that it's comical how, uh, you know, these governors are meeting over this. And they're not talking about just the crisis of the individuals or people, uh, the hardship that you and I are facing, but rather how this is going to affect the elections and affect them. And everybody is wondering how, you know, that's the question that everyone's asked so far, that look, how is this, how is this policy going to affect uh, the election? Uh, Kwon Gozo was very clear about it. He said it's about vote buying. And you remember, Kenneth, that from the first day, uh, that we'll, we'll start talking about this, the president start talking about this, it's all about vote buying. He wants an election that is, you know, free from the influence of monies and unnecessary vote buying. In the report in this day, uh, you already see uh, that even in some states, in a good state for instance, such incidents of vote buying with the old notes are already happening. So, for a lot of people watching this, they see it as a clear case of the president on one hand, doing everything in his part to ensure that look he be great on this country the right kind of election transparent one that is not tainted with you know the crisis of uh, uh, a vote buy and you see two ministers in the same cabinet openly disagreeing with each other it's, it's unprecedented uh, kenneth it's the first time we're seeing that this kind of level of disagreement among people that are supposed to be on the same page on policy and uh, certainly on governance and leadership but they are not you see two people who are actually going to so Kayamo on one side saying siding with the governors is the spokesman of the presidential campaign council siding with the governor siding with Tinubu, saying that look this policy is hurting everyone and that the president didn't think it out true and he took someone like Fashula who is a protege so to speak of the Tinubu uh, camp uh, somebody that you know can be seen as a, a, a Tinubu's boy uh, coming out to defend Mr. President and say no the president did this in good faith and that the timing is right and that even when you know the little change about 200 naira notes that the president spoke on on Thursday that that was done to just help the masses to cushion the effect of, um, of the whole uh, policy and that's nothing to do with the entire policy that they're redesigning it's okay so it's a very interesting story and i think this day uh, kudos to this day because that looks like an exclusive uh for this day and very interesting uh, 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 twist in the story itself two ministers at it to 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 head to head almost on, on the same issue Indeed, nothing nothing is as more symbolic of the disconnect of the implosion within the apc than this scenario even the governor's emmanuel they've met again and uh, the chairman of the apc uh, they've had their three-point resolution they're asking the the president to obey the supreme court but uh, president buhari just uh, gave another speech from a disababa and he almost repeated the same things he said before the doubling down uh, he didn't mention and news about the 200 naira notes of course that's what we're expecting from the cbn today uh, but he's doubling down he's saying you need to calm down because uh, i see light at the end of the tunnel essentially the president is just sticking to his uh, to his you know to his sticking with his stand and his position on this matter that look this was done in good faith of course he's aware of you know the crisis of you know the, the hardship people are going through he said that again he said look i know what everyone is going through but you know just a little bit more uh, patient from the people like he did on thursday uh, calling out to nigerians to actually understand with him uh, so it's like the the nigerian people are actually on the same page with mr president the only people that don't seem to be on the page with mr president curiously is his own base the apc governors and of course uh, certain power brokers uh, within the apc they are like you said meeting yesterday with um, uh, the chairman of the the national chairman of the party of like uh, coming together yesterday and asking Mr. President to rethink his position. It's, it's strange. Um, it's not the sort of thing that we're used to seeing in an election season like this, uh, especially the presidential election. It's just days away and you have these governors, rather than campaigning in their various places, staying back home, having these meetings and discussing what the president said. Almost as if the very life of their campaigns, the life of the pre of, of the Tinubu campaign and uh, their, their push for the presidency hangs around the issue of these notes, uh, the old notes and the new notes. Uh, the majority of you and I, a lot of people have already, you know, with the hardship is there where everybody is concerned about it. But people are gradually moving away from it. And 
like Mr. President said, just a matter of a few more days and everything, and this will be over. And that's what the president uh, is saying. And then, of course, still talking about the policy itself, that it's good for, for, for the country, it's good for the Naira, uh, for its rebound, for the economy, and for other things. But at the heart of it, too, that this presidential election, especially, will be devoid of vote buying. Now, the election is on Saturday, Emmanuel, uh, and it's the season of, it appears to be a season of endorsements and uh, stepping down for candidates. We've heard of some parties collapsing their structures for either the PDP, the APC, or the LP. We've also uh, seen endorsements. Um, the, the Business Stage has published one this morning, uh, a group called POLAF. Uh, they, they did this uh, survey for about eight months, and they're predicting an Atiku victory. Um, the Economist has predicted is endorsing Peter Obi of the Labour Party. There's been another uh, poll uh, that's giving victory to the APC presidential candidate. But mm -hmm. something, uh, something that's important here is um, people to show up to cast their votes, and it will take uh, a safe country for people to. Uh, cast their votes, Emmanuel, security. Uh, we've seen, I've, I've seen pictures and videos online circulating. Uh, apparently some people in, in states as well have seen uh, the military uh, trooping in. Is this, are we looking forward to a safe poll on Saturday? Well, I, you know, the Sun newspaper has a story about uh, the, the concern of INEC around the issue of uh, security. I think that's the least story in um, in the Sun newspaper. So, yes, and I saw those deployments on my way to work this morning. I saw also of, uh, soldiers on the street and all that. So, uh, well, the president has said that he's going to make these elections not just transparent but peaceful, and that's very important. Uh, if you're going to have a smooth transition, you must do that in the atmosphere of peace. And those endorsements you're talking about, this is the season for it. Uh, this is going to be the week of endorsement. We're going to even see, you know, political parties collapsing their structures, whole parties collapsing their structures for candidates. Um, uh, it's actually, it, it happens during an ele uh, election season. Weaker parties who think that, we look, we don't have a very sure path to any victory, who want to back a candidate uh, that we also, you know, help them actualize whatever dreams they have. And those polls too, very, very, very interesting, you know, and like they say, the best poll or the most important poll is the poll on the polling day itself, yes, right. election day. That's the poll that really matters. But of course, yes, you have bodies, you have individuals, you have agencies who are measuring, uh, using all sorts of uh, uh, tools uh, to want to predict the outcome of Saturday, uh, whether it's going to be one of the big trees, because it's clearly this election is going down the wires for these three uh, big contenders. So uh, those polls are there, some favoring uh, the APC candidate, others for the but that's to tell you the diversity uh, of this this election and the you know uh, how t uh, it's going to be one of the toughest transition and a lot of people are just waiting with bated breath to see what's going to happen on Saturday. Uh, certainly, the polls too are pointing to what might happen. Uh, with some people saying already calling it out for uh, certain candidates, I see a situation where certain media, uh, you know, uh, media organization will probably either do their endorsement or call it out uh, for. Uh, setting candidate. It happens. It's all within uh, the, it's a, it's a day's job in the life of a presidential election. So yes, back to the issue of security, it's very important. This is a week to actually, um, I, saw, I saw the IGP, I don't know if you saw the pictures of him uh, at a range the other day, actually uh, uh, shooting and all of that, uh, you know, preparing his base to prepare the policemen for this election. It's an election that we need a lot of security around it because of the tony issues, because of uh, the emotional and uh, issues around this particular transition. The president is in Addis. I think he should be here, should be back to the, to the country to actually supervise uh, his transition. The one that he has always spoken about, even eight years ago, he said he's going to be quit on this country a transparent election. And uh, Emmanuel, um, in 60 seconds, have you identified your polling unit yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll probably be here walking. So, well, okay. Uh, but so, I mean, well, you, to well, well, yeah. Well, yes. And uh, but uh, uh, most importantly, I think a lot of Nigerians are really uh, very, very ready uh, for this election. Uh, there's never been an election that I've seen people so excited uh, about going to vote uh, than this one. A lot of people indicating interest and even campaigns actually preparing the ground to move people. Uh, to, to to their voting, that's, uh, you know, that, I mean that's people. what everyone wants e to do. Exactly, go, go just, vote. Yes, move people who can who can go because of the because of the scarcity of uh, funds and all that. Actually, preparing to move people from maybe the cities uh, to the centers where they can then vote from the states, uh, from the from Abuja, from Lagos to various places to where they can vote. That is how serious uh, people are taking this election. That people are ready to even pay for people to actually travel uh, to go and vote. So yes, it's going to be interesting. Um, I think there's a kind 
carnival like atmosphere now around this with a lot of excitement and people just waiting to vote i hope it will be excitement all the way until sunday when we finally get to know who the new president will be thank you so much emmanuel bello that's the press preview let's hear your views and all the burning issues follow us on twitter at arise tv you can join today's conversation using the hashtag arise daybreak